Backpacking in Anivia. Wow, what an experience. What an experience. Let, let's sit down and talk about it for a second. So, um, I've been in Anivia for about six days now. And I'm getting ready to take off in a couple of days. And I'm going to go down to South Africa, of course. Because why else would I come all this way and not visit South Africa and maybe visit a couple other countries along the way? Anivia for now. Let's talk about Anivia. Man, I have had a freaking blast. I've had a just a free, freaking blast in this country. Now, one thing that's very different about this country, it's very unlike any other place I've ever been to. Um, a lot of people would say it's like very unsafe. Now, when I say it's very unsafe, I'm, I'm, I kind of say that because it's kind of hard to figure out like what level of unsafe that they're talking about. Like, because in San Francisco, people say like it's unsafe to walk around the street at night. But yet I walk around the street at night all the time. So it's kind of difficult to really judge. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this is like the safest place in the world and you should just go like walking around at night. That's not what I'm saying at all. This is something I would not recommend you, that y you do. But it, it's just kind of difficult to figure out like the level of like safe or not. Because I talk to local people and they say, okay, it's not safe. It's not safe. But then they also say things like, well, you're black. So... You know, you, you don't stick out as much. You know, if there's four people in a car and we're all like dark skin and people look look around, they just think like, okay, like I'm just a local, you know? But I guess if you are, I guess if your skin is like a lighter skin, maybe you're gonna stick out a little bit different. Um, and also um, when I talk to other people that are lighter skin, they would definitely tell me way more stories than, you know, dark skin people would tell me. But I don't know, maybe that's just because maybe they're tourists and things happen to tourists more than things happen to locals. I don't really know. So that's why when I say if it's safe or not, I would definitely say that uh, if you're traveling here, come with extreme caution and just don't do anything stupid. You know, don't walk around with like a computer in your backpack. Just kind of go minimal. You know, don't try to like run around wearing flashy brands because come on, dude. There are other places in the world you can, you know, dress up and look nice and look fly. So when you come down here, like, I would just say, like, just keep it low-key. Just don't be too flashy. Like, everything will be totally cool. Um, I, you know, maybe don't walk around at night. That might be a really good idea if you are, you know, black or white or whatever color you are. I think that might really be a good idea because you just don't know how the streets are here. Like, like I don't live here. Like, I'm not going to just go roaming around at night unless I'm with people, like, local people, people that know what's up. And I hear here that you shouldn't take random taxis because things could totally happen in random taxis. So you go, you kind of want to like find a driver that you meet through someone like a local, someone that you trust, and then get their number. And then if you ever need a ride, like just call that particular driver. Um, apps like Uber and Git, they don't exactly exist here. I hear that you know, um, they, Windhook is working on their own version of Uber, but I don't know how long that's going to take, and I, I don't know how safe that will be, you know, after it rolls out. So that's just one, one thing to throw out, like, you know, come with caution. Here, just walking around, like, vlogging with a camera, I don't exactly feel, like, right doing it, just because, like, when I walk around with a camera, like, everybody stares, you know, like, everyone looks, like, just because they're like, what is that, like, you know, what, what is that? You know, they think it's a phone, but it doesn't look like a phone. It's a GoPro. It's really small. But people stare, and I just don't want to draw attention. And when I'm filming, I'm filming with no microphone. I'm just filming with, like, just a small camera in my hand, and it draws so much attention. So I just don't feel, like, comfortable vlogging. I've met a ton of locals here, and I went to a handful of, like, night party spots. And it's kind of things that I don't exactly want to vlog because... Usually when I go out, I don't take a camera with me. I just take two iPhones, and that's pretty much it. And maybe, you know, um, the battery pack to charge my iPhone. But I just don't take a lot of things with me. And then I'll just take, like, you know, you know, one thing here in this pocket, one thing in this pocket. Like, I just kind of go, like, super minimal. I don't exactly want to vlog a lot of times because I feel that people just are not, like, comfortable with the camera as much. Just yesterday I went with a few people that were recording some music, like this local girl who was recording her music, and I think she, I'll get her in a vlog coming up soon because I'm actually leaving the country in two days. But I plan to come back here. So when I come back here, I plan to like, you know, make more videos with local people. This is kind of, um, this trip kind of, I just kind of randomly like booked a flight, like going to Cape Town. So I'm just gonna leave and go to Cape Town, but I'll, I'll just come back like after I get done exploring South Africa. I think I'm gonna fly out of here 
I think there's a flight going to Qatar I want to catch, like moving from Windhoek, but I don't know. I'm just going on and on and on about something that's totally different. But yeah, so there, there's like lo lots of locals that I've been chilling with and you know, I don't exactly want to vlog like every single thing. Like some things I just want to talk about later and some things I just don't want to, I just don't want to have the camera around. But we went to a couple of different studios. These were like local studios, studios that like, people have in their houses. And man, like I was actually really surprised to see like some of the tech and some of the equipment that people just like have in their house. And they're straight up making like, like straight up like hot songs, like just in their living room, like, like, you can do that nowadays with technology you know the only thing you need is an internet connection to share the creation that you made and it's just amazing to see so we went to a couple of different places um, we went to one studio and then we went to this other studio so we went to this other studio and it was like honestly the place was kind of a wreck but this dude had like all this like gear and like all, you know, the whole setup and so one of the local girls she's getting ready to sing and like he has this like padded wall here in this like round thing with like padding all around so you can get in there and like like sing like jam out get really loud and it was just really really dope like really cool experience and then i met a couple producers that worked at um a local tv station and they you know saw a lot of my like you know youtube videos and stuff like that and they thought it was pretty cool so i thought that was pretty cool that like yo like i'm making mad connections like you know just meet some hella cool people like just just like it, i wasn't even going anywhere literally i was hanging out at the hostel and you know, I met this, you know, girl who was a singer and then I met this, you know, other girl that knew, that was staying at the hostel that knew this other girl that was a singer and, and they were all together and like we went to this other place and then I met this other guy and then I met this other, it's just like, I mean, I don't know, just doors are just opening up, like what an amazing place. Gosh, I must admit, Namibia is definitely my favorite, favorite African country so far. Like I've just had a blast here and this is a place that... When I first arrived, I, I was scratching my head, like, am I really, like, how can I like it? Like, I can't even walk around at night, like, that. that's so boring. But the, the flip side of that, the difference of that is, yeah, I'm not, like, going exploring at night, but, like, I'm in, and I'm meeting people, and I'm just meeting super cool people, like, really fast. And then from there, like, you know, you go places, and there was this um, one bar called The Warehouse. I don't know if it was a bar, maybe it was more of a venue. But we went there and the warehouse was super cool. It literally reminded me of my hometown because mainly everybody in there was black. And they were just like playing hip hop and like all the alcohol was like all the American alcohol and all the freaking songs that they were playing were all American hip hop songs. And it, it just like reminded me of home so much, but then that's not exactly home. I guess this is more like home, but I was just like, yo, this is so cool. Like, this is so freaking dope. Like, I'm having the time of my life. And also to be in a country, this is something that I really haven't experienced because up until now, I've been to 44 countries in the world. And this is my first like all black country where you look around and at the airport, like everybody's black. Like the customs agents, everybody's black. Um, you know, everybody that works in the airport, like everybody's black. You know, you, you go and get a taxi, like all the taxi drivers are black. You go to the stores, like everybody that worked there is black. Like you go to the, you walk down the street, everybody is mainly black. Like when you see white people, they're mainly tourists. And it, it's just amazing to see. Like it's really cool to go to a place where it's like all black people. And like I'm riding in a car with locals and like I just feel at home, you know? Like it's so cool. Like like back in San Francisco, like back in the US, I'm sure a lot of black people can relate with me in America. But you can sort of feel the tension sometimes. You can feel the tension. Like especially in San Francisco. I get like literally looks every day, like, you know, looks like you know, like like these like just looks that make me feel like okay, it, like I, I feel like you know, you know what I mean? Like just you just get these looks. Like I haven't got any of those looks here. Like I haven't got any of those looks. It, it's more like you at home, bro. You know, that's what it feels like around here. And when I'm back in SF, like a lot of times it's kind of like oh, you're here. You know, it just feels like. It, I can't exactly explain it, but like, I definitely feel it from a certain group of people like back in the U.S. Like, it's like this this look, and I definitely feel it in Europe too. Like like leaving Morocco, and just flying over to Barcelona, 
and when you when you exit the plane the first person that greets you is someone from that country you know someone that works for the airlines or a security guard or someone who works on the ramp and like that's like your first impression and i just left morocco and honestly like i didn't have this morocco felt just like here like it wasn't that tension like i felt like at home like for real in morocco like it was just an incredible feeling and i remember walking off the plane right in, like just in barcelona and the first guy like on the jetway he just gave me like this look like it was just like this dirty look and it just reminded me yo you back in you back in europe yo you back in europe yo yo you back you back and when i say europe like i'm not saying that europe is no no different or no worse than the u.s i'm just saying like basically i'm comparing the two together you know but like i'm like yeah yeah i'm back i'm back i'm back you know and then as soon as i got to anivia it was just so dope like getting my passport stamped and they're like oh welcome this is your first time here and i'm like yeah this is my first time here and i'm like so excited and they're like oh you're gonna have such a good time you're gonna have such a good time and they're telling me to go to here and go there and go here and go there and i'm just like i can't wait i can't wait now another thing that made this trip really awesome um, I was, you know, using a couple dating websites before I arrived, and I was able to <laughs> make a lot of matches with a lot of people. But you guys know me, so I was able to do a lot of matching and stuff like that. So as when I got here, I was talking to all these different girls, and then I just stopped talking to all of them except for one, okay? Just one girl I was talking to. And, like, she was super entertaining. She was like, yo, let's go do this. Let's go do that. And that's the girl I met from Switzerland. Oh, man, she was, like, super cool. I, I'm i so happy I met her because she showed me a different part of the country that, you know, I would not have saw on my own because you definitely need a car when you come to Anibia. Like, this country is very vast. And a lot of people don't live here, so there's not a lot of buses. There is a train but I would not come here and take the train. I think it takes about 12 hours to get from Windhoek to Swakopone, and that's 12 hours on the train, but if you take a car, you can get there in like four hours or three and a half hours or something like that. So basically what I'm trying to say is you do not want to take a train here. You want to either like hitchhike or take a shuttle or better yet, you want to have like a four by four because a lot of the roads are like rock roads. And if you have a car, I mean, it can work with a car, but it'll just take a whole lot longer because you have to drive slower. Um, when I was hanging out with my friend from Switzerland, she was driving and a lot of times we were on rock roads and you would see like a four by four truck just fly by us. That's because they have bigger wheels and you know the bottom of the truck is not hitting the ground so they can just go faster. So that's one thing to point out. You might want to rent a four by four, but also a four by four is cost more to rent and you also have to put more gas in a four by four. So it's just more expensive. It's definitely more and more expensive. Now, Windhoek, let's talk about expenses. Now, Windhoek food and stuff like that is not that expensive. It's actually pretty cheap. Like just going to like a, like a local store, you know, I was um, eating a lot of like Roman noodles and pasta and, you know, uh, fruit and stuff like that because the vegan options are like, this is one of the worst countries I've been to for vegan food, yo. Like, if you're a vegan, like, it's going to be tough here. Like, you better just be prepared to be hungry because I, there's just meat. Like, Anibians eat meat like crazy, yo. Like, just don't stop eating meat. Like, they eat meat. Like, with, they, they don't eat vegetables, basically. So, one thing to point out. See, you better come with some, with a plan or something. But, like, going to a store and, like, getting food, very inexpensive. You can go get a meal. I mean, seven, seven U.S. dollars, you can get a really decent meal. You can get cheaper meals, but I was mainly in the $7 mark, you know, because I, the one thing about the country, it, they, there are, there's not a lot of stuff, okay? So when you come here, don't don't expect to go get some Thai food and Chinese food. Like You may not be able to get have all the different options that you have in other places like Cape Town and, you know, other places in Europe. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of German food. So if you like German food or if you're German, it's cool. The thing I will say about this place, especially Windhoek, and man, there are Germans everywhere. Like, you know, German Germany colonized Anibia like years ago. So it's kind of like, like it, you know, Germans still come down here. And like the people here, they I guess they still like the Germans coming down here because they Germans spend money. But you definitely see like hella German like infrastructure everywhere, like cars everywhere, like. It, and then you see Germans like everywhere. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't know. I just just wanted to make a video talking about Windhoek because I didn't exactly vlog that much. But 
this is a different place. Like I wasn't just walking around like taking public transportation. Windhoek here is a very small city. There's just not a lot to see here, but I, I really like it. Like it's a very slow paced life. Nothing moves too fast around here. Nothing happens too fast around here. And I like it, like I can dig it. Like, I mean, if you wanna come down here from the US, I would say come down, dude. Like it's a chill spot. Like just bring lots of cash because the more money you have, the, the, the better it is, you know? Cause some of the tours can get expensive if you have to rent a car then you have to like, you know, get all this equipment and then get a bunch of food and then camp and, but it, it's also be a lot of fun. You don't also have to do the camping route. You could just stay in hotels and stuff. But I, I think the camping was fun. Like it was dope looking up at the sky at night and it's just all these stars because you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's not a lot of lights and you can look up and see the stars and it's just, it's unlike what you see in the US or it's unlike what you would see in Europe or the Northern Hemisphere because we're pretty far south. Like we definitely below the equator. So the stars look different when you look up. I don't know if y'all into stars cause I'm not really into stars, but I can tell like they look different. Like. It looked different from the Sahara Desert because I was in the Sahara Desert in Morocco like a few weeks ago. And it just, it looked different. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. Like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I'll be doing something crazy. <laughs> Peace out, yo.